Good morning and welcome. Our service begins on page 355 of your Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, you have taught us that without love, whatever we do is worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts your greatest gift, which is love, the true bond of peace and of all virtue, without which whoever lives is accounted dead before you. Grant this for the sake of your only Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it is not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. 
I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reading this psalm responsively. Do not fret yourself because of evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like the grass, like the green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on its riches. Take delight in the Lord, and he shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will make your righteousness kind of light, your just dealings as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret yourself over the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger, leave rage alone. Do not fret yourself, it leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while the wicked shall be no more. You shall search out their place, but they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land, they will turn in abundance of peace. But the deliverance of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord will help them and rescue them. He will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them, because they seek refuge in him. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. Someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. Be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those that curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those that love you, what credit is that to you? For even the sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put in your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. So we all know those pictures of Jesus holding the lamb or doing all those sweet things, and we say, oh, there's my Savior. How do you feel when you read this? You still there? If someone takes your co uh, coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give without expecting to be paid back. Oh, everybody still on board? Because I tell you, you read these things and you go, w w wait a minute, surely you're not serious. But I think he is. It starts out, he says, I say to you that listen. Now I want you to picture there the thousands in front of him when he's going to feed them. He's got the thousands in front of him, and we know that some came because they wanted to be healed, and some came because they wanted to see somebody being healed, and some came for the food. Somebody always comes for the food, and, and Jesus condemns none of them. And how many have quit listening by the time you get to this part? Because this part's the hard part. This part is the part that says that your reward on earth is not going to be what you think it is. And you're not going to get to be mean to the people who are mean to you. And it's more than love your neighbor. It's love even your enemies. Sometimes we just stop with the neighbor part. We start with the, stop with the people we love. And we say, okay, I can do this. I can love the people I love. That's good. But Jesus says, go beyond that. Go beyond that. Now, I, and I have some of the ways this can be interpreted 
um, I find troubling. I'm reading a book right now about uh, the clearances in Scotland. Are you all familiar with those? The, 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 a lot of people in Scotland back 17th, 18th century lived in very small pieces of land that were owned by landlords. And at some point in time, the landlords figured they could make a lot more money using doing this different things with the land. Some of them decided to raise sheep. Sheep, it turned out, brought a lot more money than poor people living on your property. So they cleared them off. And there's been a lot written about the fact that the Scottish people didn't rise up and defend themselves. And one of the authors I've read says, well, that's because the evangelical pro Presbyterian ministers were telling them that if bad things happen to you, that you need to ex explore your own inner life and find out where sin resides in you because this is punishment to you for what you have done. Now, I have no objection to everybody, each of us, I hope we do this, at the end of every day, sitting and saying to ourselves, what sins have I committed? Where have I been less than loving? And asking for God's forgiveness and asking for help to live better tomorrow. That's all good. But to then say to someone who's suffering and is having a bad time, what sins have you committed that have caused this terrible thing to fall upon you? while we sit back and just judge you for it, that is not, I think, what the scriptures call us to. Because a lot of bad things have happened in the history of the world that aren't in response to the individual to whom it happens. But has been broad and done by evil. And if we read the Old Testament, we'll read king after king after king who did terrible things. Not because the people of Israel were bad, but because the king was. And God sent prophets to tell them where they were wrong and how to live better and to quit being bad to people, to quit kicking people off their lands, to quit causing starvation. When bad things happen, a lot of times what we need to do is stand up for justice. When we see people suffering, it is not for us to look at someone and say, hmm, what did you do? Instead, sometimes we may need to do mercy and hand them something to eat. Or sometimes we may need to do justice and stand up together and fight for them. Because I think it is the height of arrogance to think that everything that happens in the world is because of something I did, either good or bad. So when we look at this, when we say that we are to love even our enemies, it does not mean that we are to say that people who do bad to us, it's because we deserved it, nor are we to look at them and say, even if you've done bad to us, I should support you in your wickedness. Love is not Valentine's Day stuff with hearts and roses and candy. It's, it's helping people grow into who they are in the image of God. It's helping people know when what they're doing is wrong. It's calling people account and how they live and what they do so that they too may know what it is like to be people of mercy and people of generosity and people of love. So when we love our enemies, we're not saying what you do is okay. We're saying, let me help you be a better person. Let me help you, with me, create a better society. And let us res reflect to each other God's love that is in us. There it was written, I think it was Dr. King who said, I will never let another man drag me down so far that I hate him. That hate is the enemy of love. Hate is the enemy of everything that Jesus did, no matter what someone has done. So how do we do this? Because I think this work is hard. I do not think it is easy to love your neighbor. I don't think it's always easy to love the people who love you. I've talked to more than one married person who's told me about how hard it is to live within their marriage with the person they love. So imagine we now have to love our enemies. 
I think the only place that this will work for us, the only place where we can start and begin is if we recognize how much God's love has been a part of our life. How much we have been an enemy to God in our selfishness and in our greed, in our unwillingness to love and to forgive, in the way we live our lives focused so often on our own needs and concerns and not on the love of others. And yet God still loves us. God still forgives us. God still calls us to righteousness because nothing we do, according to our scriptures, nothing we do can separate us from the love of God. And we must not let something that somebody else does separate them from our love. Never. Nothing is stronger than love, not death. Not mountains or hills or depths. Does that make it easy? No, my friends. It does not make it easy. Jesus told us to daily to take up our cross and to follow him into paths, not of warfare, but of love. To take up our cross and daily suffer to do this work of loving the other. Always in thanksgiving, always in joy for what has been given us always remembering how much Jesus did out of love for us. We are worthy of that love, and nothing your neighbor does can take him or her from being worthy too. See, I think this is the part about judging. If we decide we're going to love our friends but not our enemies, what's the first thing we have to do? We have to divide the world into friends and enemies. If we're going to love our friends and hate our enemies, the first thing we have to do is judge everybody we meet. Are you my friend or are you my enemy? And when we start doing that, what a burden we bear, dividing everyone we meet into friend and enemy, dividing everybody we meet into right thinking and wrong thinking, dividing everybody we meet into people I love and people I will hate. That is the judgment that Jesus forbids. Do not judge. Treat everyone as a child of God. Hold them all accountable. But give without counting the cost. As our Father has given to you, as Jesus has given to you, as the Holy Spirit continues to give to you, live lives of generous love. May God help us as we walk this path. Thank you. Standing as you're able. Let us reaffirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. Amen. Standing or kneeling as you're able. Let us pray together the prayers of the people found on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. Pray especially this morning for those on our parish prayer list. We lift up Clifford, Susan, Henrietta, Gail, Karen, Stefan, Mary Kay, Janet, Chuck, Hank, Elaine, Nicole, Lucretia, Pam, Dominic, Carol Ann, Mary, Laura, Robert, Margaret, Barbara, Rod, Scott, Jim, Allison, Terry, Jose, Jean, Bev, Liz, Lisa, Harriet, Melanie, Lynn, Leah, Linda, Ashley, Cynthia, Mark, Joe, Eugene, Dorothy, Margaret Ellen, Selvin, John, Sean, Sarah. Are there others? Also pray this morning for the repose of the soul of Bruce Bracker, who died this past week. We pray for our health care workers, Lord, that you continue to bless them, strengthen them, protect them. We continue to pray that you would rid this world of that coronavirus, Omicron, and all such variants, Lord. We ask that you would help us to work toward peace in our world, Lord. Let us all be instruments of your peace. We especially ask that you would intervene in that situation between Russia and Ukraine. We give thanks this morning for the lives of Barbara Richardson, Catherine Smith, and Leah Williams, who celebrate birthdays this week. We give thanks for this day, for the chance to worship you in a free land. We give thanks for this parish church. We give thanks for all the blessings that you bring into our lives. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Using the confession on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Beloved, I invite you to stand as you are able.
The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, it is good to see you all today. Are you enjoying the beautiful weather? Yes. I think we're allowed to judge the weather. That's just my feeling. <laughs> um, before we do all the normal things we do, I would like to invite Barbara Richardson to come up and Christy. <laughs> I'll tell you ahead of the time, but Barbara hates this, but this is the last time she'll have to do it. Barbara, our f just immediate former senior warden, is moving to North Carolina this week. Now, Christy, I, well, I think you've got to stand over here because Christy has some things to say and she needs a microphone to say them at. Well, you come stand up here. Come stand up here. We are your friends, honey. normally don't need this, but for the uh, filming, I, live streaming, I do. Um, <clears throat> Barbara did tell me that she is sure that people are sick of saying goodbye and recognizing her, and I said absolutely not, because <clears throat> there are not enough ways that we can thank her for all that she's done for St. Andrews, but I am going to keep it short, okay. and so we won't cry. <laughs> I don't know. I've got my pinky. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm prepared. Uh, but truly, Barbara, there, there, is, there are not enough ways that we can show our gratitude for your spectacular, extraordinary, outstanding stewardship of St. Andrews in many ways. Um, she's done way too many things to mention. However, I do want to point out the two times that she was our senior warden were times of transition um, one was not as major as the second one, but when Father Bill retired and before we had Father Paul and during that transition with Father Paul, Barbara was our senior warden and led us through that. And then when Father Paul retired and we were 11 months without a rector, Barbara truly was the leader of this church and kept us going and kept us together. So, Barbara, we thank you for every bit of it. We can't repay Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so this is too much. Wait, wait, this is too much. All right. Well, Barbara, we, we, we wanted to do something that would permanently remember and recognize your work. So we're, just, we're starting a program of putting um, some plaques on our pews so that we will remember people forever. And this one says, in recognition of Barbara Richardson for her extraordinary leadership and commitment to St. Andrew's family, Senior Warden 2004 to 2005 and Senior Warden 2019 through 2021. And the one thing I would say that you left out of your, of your listing, her, not only did she transition between priests, she got COVID. I mean, not had permanently, but oh, she got right. to she lead us. Through that. No, she did not get COVID. <laughs> she got to lead us through that beginning, especially of COVID, which was so difficult. So we will, we will be remembering you forever. Oh, well, and you'll have my tree. Yeah. And we'll have your tree. You can say, tell us about your tree. The lights aren't working, so there's a problem there. <laughs> of course, something else. But um, those of you who know me well know that very rarely am I without words. This is one of those occasions. Um, I have been so blessed to be able to serve this church through so many transition periods. Um, it was really 
a gift to me, and you all have been a tremendous gift to me. Your love and your support and friendship and encouragement. And I don't like goodbyes or farewells, so I'm just going to say I'm going to be seeing you, and I'm going to take you with me right here. Thank you. Now, we do, we do want to say a prayer, so if you would join me here. And Bob, you want to come over and join us too? You get to stand in the middle. I get to stand in the middle. She, she really does not like the spotlight. I mean, I'm pushing her forward. <laughs> Let us pray. Holy and merciful Father, you have been our leader in times of trouble and distress. We thank you for sending us, Barbara, in, in our time of need to lead us. Holy Son, through your mercy and grace, you have brought us salvation and redemption. Thank you for the works of mercy you have done through Barbara in her leadership here with us. And we ask you in mercy to help her as she begins her new life in North Carolina. Holy Spirit, you have made us one people and one body. We ask you to keep us connected always to our sister Barbara as she goes on to her, her new family and friends in North Carolina that we know that she will never not be a part of St. Andrews and will always be our sister. Holy Trinity, one God, bless her in this transition and thank you for her ministry among us. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. So, Barbara and I had so many plans when we first started this out, and then COVID hit, and uh, they're still on the burner, and when you see them all, I'll make sure to tell you this was Barbara's idea. Um, so, first of all, is there anybody here for the very first time? We do have someone up here, gentlemen, if you would. We've got some, some fellow bringing you a little something for... for to remind you of us and to thank you for being here. Was there somebody over here? No? Well, welcome. We're glad you're with us. We're glad that you are here today, and we hope that you will come and be part of us again many, many times. And uh, there's always room. We are coming up, as you may be aware, to Ash Wednesday and the beginning of Lent. Hi, people at home. So glad you're here. The lights, I noticed that. I forgot, forgot y'all. So um, Lent is coming up, and not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, at which time we will do our normal imposition of ashes, and we have two services, one at 10 a.m. and one at 7 p.m., and we hope we see you at one of those. Following that, when we're in the season of Lent, on Fridays at noon we will be having the observing the Stations of the Cross and praying those. Those are the little plaques you see on the side of the wall. There are 14 stations, we call them, which recount the journey that Jesus took from being um, condemned at Pilate's seat to being buried. And we remember that, especially during the season of Lent, it was a tradition in the Holy Land for people to walk that path. And we reproduce it in our churches during this season. So that will happen um, every every Friday at noon, and then, of course, Bob and I will continue our Bible studies, though mine will not be for the next two weeks, because this week I'll be on vacation, and the following week will be Ash Wednesday. So, uh, but we'll start right after that. We will have confirmation classes on Saturday morning during Lent at 10 a.m. here in the parish hall, so I hope that uh, if you are interested in either joining the church or re reaffirming your commitment or haven't studied any of this stuff since you were 12, now might be a good time to do that. Um, what else do I have here that's kind of newish? Sun next Sunday. Next Sunday is the Street Painting Festival. Do you all know about that? Okay, two things you need to know. One is you can't get here down Lake and Lucerne. So you're going to have to go around to get here. So you might want to leave a few minutes earlier next Sunday to find a place to park. And remember, you can park behind the church, and I won't be here next Sunday, so you can use my place. Even though it says reserved for rector, somebody else can park there. Um, so that is next Sunday. And next Sunday in the afternoon at 1 o'clock, we're going to open up our church and invite people from the outside to come inside and get to know us a little bit. 
because we expect a lot of foot traffic around here. And uh, I believe that the main draw will not be our windows, though they're beautiful. I believe the main draw will be the bathroom. But um, I'm hoping they'll come in and see us. You know, there are people who really believe that if they cross the door of a church, they'll get struck by lightning or something. And we want them to know that is not true. They can come in, they can look around, they can get to know us, and they can get some lemonade. And all of that will be good. And if you would like to be part of the group that welcomes them in, please let me know or Christy know. And we'll um, have some folks here from 1 to 5 on Sunday next. On March 6th, the, ode, the Core Ensemble, our artist in residence, are doing an ode to Shavela Vargas, which will be right here. It will be beautiful. There's a performance at 2 and a performance at 4. Margot, who will raise her hand now. Margot would love to know if you were going to come at 2 or at 4 so she can help us make sure the numbers don't get too big as we hopefully come to the end of this COVID stuff. Um, we have a peace rally coming up on March 7th where we're going to work for justice. And of course, the Daughters of the King want to remind us that they are collecting um, toiletries to share with our um, guests at the Way Cafe. March is Women's History Month, and by, during that time, we have a, what they're calling a stylish campaign. Uh, to benefit Dress for Success, this is to help people, especially women entering the job market, to have clothes in order for, to go to interviews and begin their jobs. So if you see the mannequin in the back, this is not. Our name is Susie Success. I think Susie Success' diet worked too well, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> She's actually on a steamer. Um, but it's a, the, it's a reminder that, that we're looking for clothes to help women enter the workforce. And uh, you can drop off goods here at the church um, during the whole month of March, Monday through Friday, between 9 and 1. And we will be happy to, uh, to do that. Yes, Margo. Okay, so they, um, just for the people online, if they also need accessories. They need belts and shoes and purses and scarves and pins and all the things that make a, an outfit into an actual uh, statement of uh, readiness. They'll also take money, just in case. I think that's it for our announcements. I think there's, did I overlook something? No, I'm good? Okay. Then let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer C on page 369. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law and to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Oh. So, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. 
Lord God of our ancestors, God of Abraham and Sarah, of Isaac and Rebekah, of Jacob and Rachel and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith. Just one note for um, those who have not received communion here recently. We are still unable to share the wine because of COVID, but our, tr our practice is for me to come to the steps and for each person to come up one by one where I will give them a piece of bread, and then most take that back to their seats, and then we consume together once I've returned to the altar.
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Our post-communion prayer is found on page 365 of your Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, we know that life is short, and we do not know how much time we have to gladden the hearts of those who make this earthly pilgrimage with us. So be swift to love, make haste to show mercy, shower abundant hospitality on friend and stranger alike. And may God, who first loved you, God whose property is always to have mercy, and God who invites you with infinite hospitality to share eternity, bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
forth into the world and do unto others as we would have them do to us. Alleluia, alleluia.